folks, to another edition of TiffinCast. Today's uh, guest is a friend of mine who's uh, based out of Manhattan, and he is a photographer, an author, and speaker, and a business coach. His name is Jeff Shaw. And Jeff, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Seishu. Nice to see you. I know a few days ago I posted a, uh, a post on TiffinBox about your workshop series. Um, you know, I was definitely taken by how, how incredibly... In, in, intensive those were really because uh, the, reading the descriptions I was just like blown away by how much information you were going to share with other photographers let's go in a little deeper in fact and talk a little bit about the the series tell me a little bit about what the series is all about and why you decided to start it okay cool well the series is uh, there's a series of five workshops and each of them are the five kind of best kept secrets that, that I established my 30 year business on, you know, I mean, and I decided I just wanted to give it away. You know, I've been holding on to these secrets. These are the things that made a monumental difference in my business over 30 years. And, you know, I think any one of these topics can dramatically change a photographer's business, let alone collectively all five of them. Um, and I chose to do them at this time of the year, because as you said, they're kind of intensive. I mean, there's, there's a lot of work that we can do in the context of our call but there's a lot of follow-up photographers will need to do. So I, I refer to them as, you know, kind of winter workshops because it's at this time of the year that I've learned that photographers can tackle this type of work. Um, so, you know, it, it, this is the time of year people are reevaluating their business, hopefully have a little more time, and sure. can do this type of work that will bring about an amazing 2014 for them. Excellent. Yesterday's uh, workshop was the first one and was about remote sales, and I've already discussed uh, with you offline how how eye-opening one even just one of your ideas was about remote sales and how now I'm going to look at possibly working and using remote sales as an option for very very busy clients um, what can one expect from each of your modules I guess our workshops going going for going forward from uh, from here on out okay um, you know they should be they they are they should be able to apply them you know I mean like yesterday with remote sales, I, I had kind of posed the challenge. Like, okay, over the next five weeks of the workshops, why doesn't everybody try to take on one remote sale? Like, give it a try. Um, so I want this to be a real experience. And I've kind of, in my own mind, I've sort of reframed the workshop experience from being five individual workshops to being, you know, a five to six week coaching experience for photographers that I can kind of be, hold them accountable, hold their hand if that's what it takes, but make sure they get the work done. Mm -hmm. So um, there should there there will be very specific takes takeaways and action steps that that um, each photographer can can apply. Excellent. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the other uh, workshops that are coming up. Yes. So, you know, and actually, I just want to mention with the idea of remote sales because we have people obviously watching this that that weren't in the workshop. Sure. I always think it's really important to make the distinction because I don't want to set anybody down the wrong path. What we are referring to, as you know, we discussed on the call yesterday with right. remote sales, right. is staying present with the clients using online galleries and screen sharing. Remote sales is not just posting your photographs and letting people place their own orders. Okay, that would be online sales, and and you know, in some parts of photography businesses, that might be appropriate, but. I'm talking about remote sales, which is why that distinction can be the entire difference as to whether it's successful or not. It's not about just stop being relation in relationship with your clients. It's actually deepening the relationship mm -hmm. because if you're doing it remotely, you actually need to be more present than you've ever been. So it actually, I think, calls out of us to be at our best. Uh, the second workshop is about uh, auctions, what we refer to in our business as an auction system. And, you know, and, and this one topic alone can be a, a game changer for anyone's business. Um, we have an unbelievable success rate for auctions. That, this means do donating to silent live auctions. It represents 40% of my annual income. Um, oh, wow. So it's, a big, it's a big chunk. We, we have this down to a science. And I say we, and my partner Warren, uh, who actually will be facilitating next week's workshop, this is his almost sole job in the business. Uh, because we discovered, or he discovered a few years ago when he came into the company, that you know, I wasn't maximizing the potential with auctions. We had, you know, was, this, the success was there. And he's like, well, if the success is there, why not amp it up? Um, so we have a really logical way of going about having just a tremendous success out of auctions. So for anybody, that's a game changer. If, if, 
And if any photographer isn't currently contributing to live and silent auctions, you know, we can turn their business around so quickly. If they are contributing, it's just, I guarantee you, we can improve it. Guarantee it. Are you going to go over how to find live auctions or silent auctions in, in, uh, in your community and that kind of thing? Yeah, from finding them, from the importance of finding the right one, because mm -hmm. it all comes down to the right auction. Sure. All sure. of it. I mean, because how everything rolls out from there yep. to, you know, to what we donate, to, uh, you know, following up. I mean, we have we have a 100% success rate of converting auction winners to clients. 100%. Excellent. You know, every uh, single person that wins uh, or, or has bid high enough to get our services becomes a client. And then when they become a client, you know, that's, we consider that a done job because we know they're going to be happy. We know they're going to refer them. That's how you move your business forward. Excellent. Your third workshop is on touch points. Yeah. What, what, what does yeah. that mean exactly? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you asked actually because it's become a common, a pretty common term. I mean, I say touch points to a lot of people like, oh, yeah, that old thing. Um, and yet I think there's a misinterpretation of it. So touch points is looking at each point that you are in touch with your clients. Okay, so from every, you know, so the first touch point might be when they visit your website. The second touch point might be when they inquire about your services. The third one might be your response to their inquiry. On and on and on, all the way through, you know, the portrait session or the wedding, through delivery. So every, literally making a list of every interaction you have with your clients. And it's pretty shocking when we see as photographers how much work goes into this thing. <laughs> uh, I think the first time I did it, I first I realized that each portrait session had I think 26 touch points. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You don't realize but there's so many there's these little interactions confirming the appointment, following up. I mean there's a lot of little touch points. So it starts with making a list and that's usually as far as most people go. And our touch point system has two other columns. The second column is how many different ways can you offer that touch point? Okay? And that will help photographers Create their business in a way that they can serve a much broader audience. That doesn't mean that they're not still serving whether niche market per se, but a much broader audience because, you know, in this world, there are people who have a lot of time, people have no time. I mean, we have low tech clients, high tech clients. You have to appeal to all of them. So you want every touch point to see if you can, how can you create it in many different ways. And then the third column, which is, I have to say, where I have the most fun, is what can you do at each touch point? to surprise, shock, or add value. That's <laughs> you know, excellent. That, yeah. And that's a really fun test. I'm like, what little thing can you do at every touch point? Because from a client's perspective, what an amazing experience that is if they just get these little little surprises along the way. So that's kind of the added value col column. Excellent. Um, so that's, that's a really thorough. Uh, it also creates really consistent service when you systemize this, and you, if, whether you're you know, in your business alone or you have mm -hmm. a staff. When you systemize this, everybody, all your clients get consistent service all year long, not just when you're, not just when you're slow enough to have the time, <laughs> but also when you're so busy because it's a lot, much more systemized. Excellent. Um, the fourth workshop is about finding, I'm assuming, perfect clients. Yes. Yeah. You know, what, can you tell, what can you tell us about that? I mean, because I think everybody wants uh, all their clients to be perfect, and, yeah. and sometimes, you know, things either get dropped or the clients have uh, different expectations or whatever it is and that relationship sort of starts to sour. So are you going to cover the, how to, how to I guess, find perfect clients and perhaps work with uh, per, per, those perfect clients through your, through your system? Yeah. I will tell you, this is actually one of the most fun topics for me because I, I feel like it's, it's changed so much. And even in recent years, um, it's not about finding people at all anymore. It is about being found, you know, and that is a really big distinction that we need to grasp. Like you can't, you can't, it's not really not a, like I said, it's not about finding your perfect clients. Um, people, consumers today, and like I said, we are, we're consumers as well as entrepreneurs. So we have to put ourselves in, in that position of a consumer sometimes. And remember, what does it feel like when you know somebody wants your business? We all back up, you know? And from a marketing perspective, you can't get a message through to save your life. You know, you just, you can't get a message through anymore because we have, you know, as consumers, we have TiVo, we have spam mm -hmm. protectors. And so consumers are in control of the messages that get through. Mm -hmm. Okay. So therefore it's not about finding them. It's about being found and it's about attracting.
but you, it starts with identifying who your perfect client is. You know, and what I love about this also is that it's it's adaptable to any business anywhere. You know, I'm not judging who's what's who somebody's perfect client is. The highest end client does not mean the perfect. That's the perfect client for certain photographers. You know, you just have to know what your market is. So it has to be really clear on who you're looking for. And then you have to develop your brand, your business in ways that that they find you. But you have to call them forward. I mean, a lot of photographers literally are calling forward the wrong clientele. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? <laughs> I knew that was going to stump you. Yeah. Well, you know, we, were, we you and I were chatting about it offline a little bit yesterday about, you know, money back guarantee and different things and, you know, how the whole premise of that is calling forward the long the low hanging fruit. You know, so if that's who you're looking for, fine. But if it's not who you're looking for, so it's it's a lot of it. I mean, I use it, one of the things we're going to go over in this this uh, workshop is what I call a tribe identifier, um, meaning you know the tribe that I want to serve, my perfect client. I'm very clear as to who they are, and this is what I want to help photographers understand. I want to help them get very clear who your perfect client is for the business that you want to build. It's in your control. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I believe in life by design. So. You know, you design the business, you design the clientele you want to serve or that you're meant to serve by understanding who you are. And a tribe identifier is really using language that only the people that you serve will get. You know, that it's using language that it, they recognize themselves in and then they walk forward. So, you know, we're going to talk, that's one of the most useful tools and I'll show how and where I use that tribe identifier and how meaningful it is. Um, you know, in my tribe identifier, which I'm not going to, you know, I want to go into it in, in a logical way in the workshop, but one of the requests often comes up, or photographers ask me, what, how do I handle digital files? I don't get asked to sell my digital files because I'm not calling forward the, the client that wants that. I mean, if anybody goes to my website, it is very obvious I'm about producing portraits, not about selling digital files. That's excellent. Uh, and the last workshop that's on March 19th uh, is going to be about features and benefits. And this is obvious. I mean, this is like, you know, marketing one-on-one practically, right? So Yeah. This is, this is languaging. And, you know, it was, it was interesting. Even in yesterday's workshop, one of the most common feedback we got back from people and in requests, and it came up on the call as you were there, somebody wanted, well, can you send us the draft email that you send your clients? Um, somebody else sent me a message afterwards that I loved hearing how you word things. Um, somebody else wrote it, wrote back to after the workshop and said, it was really helpful to me to, to understand how you communicate. You know, this was a good learning experience for me. I didn't realize how valuable that would be for photographers that they want to, they, they want to really understand exactly how they can say things. So that's exactly what this workshop is about. It's about, a, it's about a languaging. Um, I actually wrote an article for the PPA's Professional Photographer Magazine in de last December's issue. Um, the editor there knew I was working on this sort of material and she asked me to write an article. So if anybody has that, again, Professional Photographer Magazine last December, uh, there's an article on features and benefits. I, this, again, it's, it's a game changer. How you communicate makes a world of difference on the response that you get from people. I like to compare it to like car dealers. Car dealers are... Their entire business model, whether people realize it or not, their entire business model is based on listing features. Okay, so they, you know, they have front wheel drive, mm -hmm. they have cup holders, leather seats. They list the features. They don't tell you the benefits of those features. You know, I mean, there's a story about the cup holders. Cup holders are a feature, but you know, you could make up a dramatic story about cup holders. How you know. The benefit of a cup holder, a benefit of having multiple cup holders in your minivan is that, you know, you're, all your kids have a place to put their drink and blah, blah, blah. There's a story behind the benefit, but they don't go there. They only tell you the feature. Mm. The reason they do that is because when you speak in terms of features, it, it uh, creates comparison. Okay? And the car, car dealers rely on this. That's why car dealers are, if you ever notice, they're always lined up down the street one after another. Mm -hmm. The entire business model is based on comparison. Okay, so they only speak in terms of features so that people go from dealership to dealership and compare the features and then they want to win by price. Okay, now works, that's their business model. But you can imagine as photographers, if you list only your features, you're, you're creating the opportunity, you're encouraging mm -hmm. potential clients to compare you to other photographers and their features. Right. right. And, and, so, come, and it comes down to comes down to comes down to price then at that point. Right, exactly. And then you're forcing people to come down to price. That's right. exactly it. I mean, you're you're 
we're, it's creating a business model similar to the car dealers, which is exactly why people feel like, you know, photographers feel like they're just being compared to everybody else. And they, you know, the people, the, the photographers at the best price win. It's, it's literally the structure of the business. This is kind of a, you know, features and benefits is not a new model from the corporate perspective. I mean, corporations have sort of been onto this, but it hasn't trickled down to the small business owner. And this is an opportunity, I think, for photographers to get a different way of, of language. And until it catches on, that's going to put photographers in their market area ahead of their competition. You know, because as prospective clients are quote unquote shopping around, speaking to their benefits will, will change their, their mind. You know, and, and there's science behind this, literally. I mean, it, there's, sure. you know, and, the, and I can get really nerdy about this, but the <laughs> part of the brain that you're talking to right. when you're speaking to benefits is the emotional decision making side of the brain. Features actually speak to the logical side of the brain. So you're literally triggering, triggering the emotional part of the brain that makes decisions in the first place. Terrific. I'm looking forward to this entire series, Jeff. Uh, really, it's uh, yesterday's workshop, as I said, was an eye-opener for me. And it sort of uh, set the tone to what one can expect in the rest of the workshops that are coming up. Uh, almost one a week, uh, other than the time when I think you're off to WPPI. Um, uh, is there is there anything in particular that you're you're seeing in the in the industry right now that is troubling to you? That's troubling. Hmm. That th the question throws me because I'm such an optimist. You know, I mean, I actually think I've been in this business for 30 years. I'm having more fun now than I ever have. Um, I think it's an amazing time. I think it's a transitional time in our industry, no doubt. You know, and I don't want to minimize other people's challenges. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is if you can. It's those that are willing to adapt and make the change and get, get underneath it to the con concepts. You know, if you can get underneath as to what's going on in the world, you can, and, ha and then have a willingness to change and adapt. Uh, you know, that, those are the people that are moving forward. You know, the ones that are feeling stuck, those photographers or any small business that's feeling stuck, are, are not, ha they don't have the same level of willingness or they're not having the opportunity to get the concepts in the way the world has changed. You know, there isn't an industry, there isn't an industry that hasn't changed. I mean, look at the changes in the music industry in the last several years. You know, I mean, they don't, there's no money to be made hardly off of, of record sales anymore. You know, minimal commissions on, on downloads and streaming. If you can't put on a good live performance, you're not going to survive, you know? So there's been dramatic changes in almost every business model and you have to kind of understand what's making people tick, what's making the world tick and then get excited about it. Like, so I'm genuinely excited about the extra challenges, because I actually think they're, from a value perspective, I think our world has better values. Uh, it, it's interesting that you say that, because um, I know you've recently gone, come on board to uh, work with Sticky Albums, and, and you use Sticky Albums as part of your workflow in some ways, right? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, and, and, and it's amazing, um, you know, at some point, you know, you were probably for the first 20 or 25 years even, uh, a, a very, um, you know, the, the, the prototypical photographer who delivers prints and that's sort of the end of the story almost. Now you have to take it to the next level and surprise them in a ways such as using sticky albums and things like that to say, hey, listen, you know, these, this is a, an added value that I'm, uh, I'm providing you. Uh, check it out. You know, and, and that gives them an opportunity to share your work with their friends and families and, and bring you more work as well. Yeah. So it's 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 interesting how you've embraced new technology. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. and you know I said and it's and it's it's you're not going to stop the sharing. You know. Right. The fact of the matter is, there's it's way too easy to for your average person to screenshot, share. You're not going to stop it. Mm -hmm. So you might as well get on top of it. The, the, by far, and I think I may have referenced this to you before. By far, one of the best books anybody can read about this issue is the Marketing Lessons of the Grateful Dead. Okay. Um, I mean, odd, odd, it seems like an odd choice. The Grateful Dead was dealing with the recording of their music at their concerts, just as photographers, is that they were having the same issue with sharing. Like mm -hmm. people showing up with their little push button cassette players and, you know, what to do with it. They got on top of the issue and instead of, you know, instead of, uh, discouraging those people from showing up to their concerts, they actually gave them front row seats. They called them tapers. They decided, well, you know what? These people showing up with recorders are clearly our best fans. They're like maniacs about us. Mm -hmm. Let's treat them special. Put them in the front rows. They got invitations to the concert six months before the general public. 
eventually those tape recorders were brought on stage. The band would bring the recorders so that they got a better recording. Okay? But it didn't affect their record sales because their best fans wanted both. They wanted to record the experience and they wanted that ultimate experience of quality. Okay? I think that's a direct comparison to where we're at as photographers. Like People want to experience, they want to share the experience that they've had with you, which is what Sticky Albums does so beautifully. And when structured well as a business model, they still want beautiful finished product. They're calling forward the right people. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, it's been a wonderful chat with you this morning about the workshop series that you've just launched. And I look forward to the other workshops that are coming up um, on February 19th, the 26th, March 12th, and March 19th. Um, all these... All these workshops are listed on my website, of course, and obviously on your website. Yeah. So yeah. Um, if folks have any questions, I'm sure they'll post them underneath this video. And I hope you do get a, a few minutes to come back and respond to them as well. Yep, absolutely. And I, I want to explain, Let me, if I take a moment, let me explain. The, the, since one class already passed, the workshop series is actually the equivalent price of four of the workshops anyway. So if one chooses to get the whole series, uh, the recording is available for whatever, whatever you've paid for. So anybody that's chosen the whole series gets the, all the recordings anyway. So even for those that, that missed yesterday's workshop, it's still worth taking the whole series because then you at least have the recording of the one that you missed. Or you can choose them individually based on the different topics. Personally, uh, and I think next year when I do this again, it may be a series only option because now that I'm in it, the collective value of all five points I think is even better. Uh, but this year I did uh, offer the opportunity to do them on an individual basis as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Bye. Bye.